as per Shaiva Tantra, invocation of a deity, be it for a simple avahanam or an elaborate prana pratishtha, involves three components. Number one, asanam. Here, a seat is prepared for the cosmic consciousness to land as a deity. It is the reference point for the deity to manifest and sit. Number two, murti. This refers to the form which will sit on the asanam that we have prepared. We provide the form which serves as a framework for the deity which we invoke. And finally, number three, mulam. Mulam literally refers to the root. So by using the mula mantra, a very specific sound formula and specific kriyas, we breathe life to the form invoked, thus bringing life to the deity. In this video, we will be focusing on the third component, which is the mulam. In Shaiva Tantra, there is a prescribed manner followed by the Acharya to breathe life into the deity by the means of a mantra. So after forming and worshipping the asanam, meaning the seat of the deity, we establish the form of the deity. For this, we do nyasam, meaning the process of touching and energizing a body to turn it divine. We do this nyasam for the deity be it in the form of a kalasha, linga, or idol. The Mula Mantra is the life of the deity. We visualize the Mula Mantra as being in the Dvada Shanta, two inches above the crown center, blazing hot, equivalent to crows of sun. Then, we bring it down to the forehead slowly like a kite to the forehead. On the forehead, we visualize the Mula Mantra to be as cool as an equivalent to crows of moons. Then, we bring it further down and ultimately exhale it through the nostril into a flower. We then offer the flower onto the head of the deity visualizing the Mula Mantra to be entering the head of the deity. Before a ritual, there are many elaborate procedures which the Acharya has to perform. It includes various Nyasams and Bhuta Shuddhi. Here, the Acharya brings himself beyond the concept of purity and impurity and the cosmic principles. Importantly, he physically energizes every part of his body into that of Shiva or the pertaining deity. As per Shaiva Tantra, the deity's body is a mantra maya sharira, meaning it is a body made up of mantras. It is a vidya deha, body of knowledge in the form of vibrations of mantras. The Acharya infuses the same mantras which make up the Lord's body the deity's body and brings himself into a state of complete oneness, of complete Advaita and stands as Shiva or the deity. Only then does he use the Mula Mantra to breathe life into the deity. This is why a deity is dependent on the Acharya who does the Prana Pratishtha or Avahana. A qualified Shivacharya has to observe a very rigid lifestyle without swaying away from his Shaiva Anushthana. The Dvada Shanta is the absolute void or the space of pure consciousness, the aspect of God beyond form. It is the state described in the Nasadiya Sukta of Rig Veda, the starting verse which goes as Om. Nasadasi no sadasi tadani im Nasi trajo no vyoma paroyate. This mantra of the Rig Veda speaks about the state of God before the initiation of the observable universe. It speaks about the state of absolute consciousness which was neither existent or non existent. It is a state beyond existence and non-existence, which is something not comprehensible by the mind. The Purusha Sukta, which 
appears in all branches of the Vedas, also elaborates on how the Absolute Consciousness, as a personification of a cosmic being, expanded himself to form the universe. The mind is influenced by the moon. The Vedas affirm the truth that the mind is linked with the moon. Chandra Mamana So Jataha So says Purusha Sukta. As per this verse, the moon is born out from the mind of the cosmic being. The moon influences the waves of the ocean. The mind, which has a wavy nature, is also influenced by the moon. This is why people undergo various mental states according to the waxing and waning of the moon. And this is why the Mula Mantra is brought down to the head with the expression of being as cool as a crow moon. Then we descend the Mula Mantra and exhale it through the nostril into a flower which we offer to the deity. The Prana or life force is associated with the breath. The Purusha Sukta again affirms this in the verse Pranat Vayura Jayata meaning Vayu is born from the prana of the cosmic person. Your very being is a miniature of the cosmos. An Acharya who has done the necessary nyasa has turned his very body and being into the deity, the cosmic being. Therefore, he manifests the Mula Mantra, the very deity in a vibrational form condensed from the void of Dvadashanta mm-hmm. and then further condenses it into his mind to finally exhale it as a life breath, encapsulate it within a flower which enters and brings the deity to life once offered. The flower has a very deep significance as expounded by the Vedas. We have a portion which is popularly referred to as the Mantra Pushpam of the Taitiriya Aranyakam of the Yajur Veda. The verse Om Yopam Pushpam Veda Pushpavan Prajavaan Pashuman Bhavati Chandramava Apam Pushpam Pushpavan Prajavaan Pashuman Bhavati Ya Evam Veda Yopa Bayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Bhavati Now, the superficial meaning to this He who understands the flowers of water becomes the possessor of flowers, progeny and cattle. Moon is the flower of the water. He who knows it to be so becomes the possessor of flowers, progeny and cattle. He who knows the source of water becomes established in his self. Now water here represents consciousness of the state of Godhood. One who realizes God or consciousness becomes the Lord to the mind, the Lord to his genetical makeup meaning progeny and wealth. He becomes the master of his life rather than being a slave to these creations. This is how the magnanimity of the cosmos is condensed into creation, into consecration during a prana pratishtha. The key principle in every prana pratishtha or any process to invoke a deity is to establish yourself as the deity. So in this example, Shiva as per Shaiva Tantra as the very cosmic being that we are talking about. You actually breathe, the life force that you are breathing into a deity, into an idol, is actually coming from the internal state of Godhood within you. So let us all cultivate the state of oneness and realize our true nature as Shiva.